What's up guys? Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome back to the Crosslink channel. This is a first look and build of the SC10 Shark by Lotmax. It's a 3D printer that can do bicolor printing. It also has a laser engraving module and an auto leveling probe. This device was sent to me by Lotmax for free. So thanks Lotmax for sponsoring this device. However, this video is completely unbiased. As usual, I'm giving you my honest opinion uh, on the build process and the ups and downs I discovered. There's also going to be a few more upcoming videos about this device. So how is this gonna work? I'm going to do this build today so you can see the process we're gonna try to do some first test prints. And then this printer is going into my time-lapse setup, um, going for two to 300 hours of continuous printing over the next two weeks. So these time-lapses I'm gonna post as separate videos on my channel, so you can see some first results. At the end of that time frame, by the end of October, I'm gonna post a 10-minute review about this device, so you can see the results, all my findings, the ups and downs I had, uh, fixes I had to do, and then hopefully this is a complete view on this product, if it's worth buying or not. So let's check it out first, how this came to life. There was a Kickstarter campaign for the Lotmax SC10 Shark. And in the meanwhile, it has become available on GearBest. The final price is about 100 US dollars more than the Kickstarter with all the features included. I've included this link in the description of this video. So let's have a quick look at the features that this device is supposed to have. So the first claim that Lotmax is making about this device that it's printing faster than other printers, about 30% print time safe. I think we should put this to the test and find out if that is really working, if it produces comparable results to other printers at a higher speed. Then it has a quite unique looking cooling system with three or four fans actually cooling the heating system and also the nozzle. And then it has this removable touch screen, which is also quite unique, uh, very interesting. And yeah, here you go. There it was available on Kickstarter with two different colors. I think on GearBest currently you can only get the silver or black version, I would call it more like and that was pretty unique for the Kickstarter. I'm wondering what color they've sent me. So let's have a look at that. Here you can see again the nine point leveling with the Beal Touch. And then here they talk about the laser engraving module. I think that is something we should completely test separately. This is a little bit too much for today. Bicolor printing, um, that is an additional module and I hope they've included this in the box. And yeah, here are some samples. Power loss recovery seems to be one feature. A filament sensor is included. Dual gear extruder, which is really exciting. So it should be able to push filament through more reliably. Then it's supposed to have a night mode, a silent mode. I'm going to do some sound level testing on this to find out how much of a difference it's actually going to be if we enable this mode. And yeah, here again, the touchscreen, multi-language user interface, also nice. Yeah, these uh, leveling adjustment knobs, that's pretty average, I would say. They also talk about the build quality being super nice. So it has a steel build plate. Um, so we're gonna check that out as well. And then they claim to have a 240 watt high temperature heated bed. So I'm gonna test this out as well, how quick the heat up process is. Print volume seems to be pretty average, something comparable to the Ender printers, I guess. More or less the same, maybe a little bit higher but um, that's only 1.5 centimeters, so I think it's still very comparable. Another thing I'm really excited about is that it has a 32-bit ARM processor. That means it will process printing commands faster. That's probably also one reason why they claim that this printer can print faster. That is one prerequisite definitely to have. The slicer software seems to be some kind of Cura derivative. So we'll have a look at that. Also, I'm going to try out other slicers like Cura. Probably shouldn't be an issue because that seems to be very, very similar. And that is what we're going to do today. We're gonna try to set it up and see how fast we can get some printing results out of this device. So German Customs left its markings here. Um, so let's just open this box. So luckily this seems to be the complete K 
hit with everything that was in the Kickstarter campaign. So two different filament colors, an auto leveling kit, the laser engraving kit, some tools, and also the bicolor printing kit, which is super exciting. So I would say the packaging looks really, really nice. This looks like uh, the touchscreen holder, and it seems that they included the black color version, not the purple one, but it includes all the components that were uh, supposed to be in the Kickstarter campaign. So, nice, nice screen here. Layer number two. Yeah, this looks like uh, some plywood actually, probably for testing out the laser engraving. Yeah, this is the whole vertical frame kit. I'm wondering how to remove this without destroying anything. Seems that all the cables are already connected, so I don't have to connect anything, but uh, that makes it a little bit more complicated to take out this in one piece out of the box. Well, that is really heavy. Well, it looks like this is the only thing to do to fix this vertical frame part. Let's have a quick look in the manual. And that's, that's really a surprise. That's, there's only four screws needed to mount this whole thing together. That's pretty simple. Compared to the end of the Pro video, if you've seen that, there was a bunch of screws to do. It was more like a DIY kit, but this one is really pretty much set up. So we only have to do this one thing. So check it out. This is what I had to do. I had to align this extrusion with the bottom of the frame. So they are perfectly flush. And then I inserted these two screws here at the bottom and gently tighten them into that extrusion. Same procedure here at the bottom. I also aligned those extrusions and then I gently inserted those screws, tightening them with my hand. And then you can use the hex driver to really finish that. Yeah, this looks pretty much done. So that should be it about completing the frame. Last thing to do here at the top is to insert the PTFE tube. All cables should be connected. Just double check that all the cables are inserted here at the bottom. We're still missing this one that's going into the Z-axis motor. And the end stop switch cable also needs to be inserted, obviously. So this is uh, plywood pieces. Probably useful for testing out the laser module. This is the removable print bed. It seems to be a metal sheet um, that is magnetic, which is nice. So we can just easily pop it off. Um, size of it seems to be 250 by 250. And officially the printer was supposed to have a 235 by 235. I'm curious if that printer really can go to the actual corners of this print bed. Next thing here, I wanna fix the filament holder to the top of the frame. This is fixed from the top. So then we can mount that display holder here on the side. Just another two screws. Okay, so this fits in quite firmly. And then it's supposed to be placed here. Is that everything? It seems to be that we're already done with the actual mount procedure. Final thing to do is to connect the power and we wanna check if that thing is working. Okay, so let's turn it on. And yeah, it seems to be booting up and it's alive. So what next? I figured that there is a new firmware upgrade available for the Lotmax SC10 Shark from uh, their homepage. So I wanna get that firmware installed on the printer before I do anything with the printer. So it's gonna be a fair review with the latest software. Let's go to the Lotmax homepage. They have a support section here and there you can download firmware. And from here we can select the SC10 Shark model. The latest version seems to be 0222 and let's download that. So I've unpacked the contents of the zip file here. I'm going to copy these files into the main directory of the SD card and then I just go and insert the SD card into the printer turning the power on and it should be upgrading the firmware on its own. Let's power on the device. So it seems to be working, the firmware upgrade is running. And it's booting again with the new firmware. Let's check the version numbers. 
So the firmware date is September 7, 2020, which seems to be okay. And I think we're ready to do some testing. So to get going with the first printing, we need to adjust the nozzle distance in all of the corners and also in the center. And there's a helper menu in the printer menu to support with that. So we'll have a look at that now. I think it's in a control menu. And here is the leveling menu. So the first thing to do is really to tap on any corner. So the nozzle will move to that corner. Then we can take the piece of paper and see how the distance is. And then we can use the, the adjustment knobs here to adjust the distance. So let's do that for the first corner and then I go fast forward to the rest. This looks nice. So let's go to the next one. And then finally the center. So center point is still not touching. So we have no resistance here. That means we have to go back to the corners and repeat the whole procedure. And now we have just a little bit of, of contact and I hope that is enough for the test print. So you see, just by running this little four corner bed adjustment, the center point is actually lower than all the corners. And that is a perfect reason why you should use the Beal Touch sensor to really calibrate for nine points instead of just the corners, because then you cannot, you cannot have both. Like in this case, I had to bring up the corners even more. And that means if you're printing a larger object that there would be too much pressure in the corners and it would be just about right in the middle. Anyways, we're going to print something with this single nozzle. So let's just just kick off the first print. So you can see once I push the filament through the sensor, a red LED lights up and then I have just to make it through this opening here. The rest is just pushing the gears and then pushing the filament in. So what you want to do is insert it manually until it is just above the print nozzle until it reaches the end here. Let's print the lucky cat. So currently the surface is heating up and then I guess the nozzle is going to start to heat up. So it looks like the first layer is coming down really nice and clean. Let's wait until the end of the print and then have a look at the first result. So it seems that it's really, really sticky. So best thing to do here is probably to lift off that plate. Pop. So I would say for a first test print, this happy cut looks pretty perfect. Uh, I hardly had such a first result on a newly built printer. So if you have a look at the detail here, there is no ringing visible. There's no artifacts visible, no blobs. This is really, really a very nice first result. So what next? I want to apply the bicolor printing head and also the auto leveling kit because I think basically you can leave it on all the times. On the original Kickstarter page for the Lotmax SC10 Shark, there's actually a pretty nice guide how to apply the bicolor setup. So I'm just going to follow that and I'm not going to show you this super in depth. So if you're interested, I'm linking that video down in the video description so you can watch it anytime and I'm just going to fast forward this upgrade. So let me show you what's in the bicolor printing kit. There's a second um, extruder motor here, which is basically the same setup than the first motor and that's going to be applied to the top of the printer, to the frame. And here we have the replacement dual color printing nozzle with the heat block and here we have the two PTFE inlets. So it's a two in and one out hot end setup Let's have a look at the leveling kit. This is a Beal Touch sensor with a little mounting frame. And this is going to be applied to the side of this print head. First of all, 
we replaced the nozzle and we have mounted a secondary extruder motor here at the top of the printer, second PTFU tube here. All the cables go to the side, which is uh, done in a clean way. They come out here and then we added those additional cables and plug them here into these additional ports. Hopefully getting the dual color printing setup working right now. I will show you in a moment a first dual color print and by the end of October I'm going to show you the 10 minute review of this printer so you will really know what happened in these two weeks, what went wrong, what were the pitfalls. Until then I wish you a good week, bye bye and enjoy the first dual color test print.